Okay, so since my uh, time-lapse video of repairing a uh, xylophone was so popular and people wanted to, to like see it in slow motion about what I actually, all the things that I did, um, I thought I would put together this video of how to change the tubing and repin a xylophone, although this is obviously metallophone. I'm using this one because it is one of my oldest instruments. This instrument is well over 30 years old. It's the Parapole with the thin bars that haven't been made in decades. They're usually wider than this nowadays. And what's happened is all of the tubing made of rubber after decades of use and aging is cracking and, um, and is very brittle and it doesn't sound very good. So I am going to re-tube this instrument. So what you're going to need to retube the instrument is, and you'll notice I'm, I'm not using both hands to pick off the bars. I am picking it off from the nail end so you can do it one-handed, no problem. Um, and I teach the kids to do this too. You can either do two hands with both sides, or if you want to just be fast about it, put your thumb on the nail and pop it right off. And they come right off fast and easy without damaging it. Um, one of the problems that also encounter with the older style of at least the parapole xylophones and metallophones are the pins. The nails are short. They're rather short. And so when somebody does take a bar off improperly, um, it puts so much pressure on the wood here that it, it shatters the wood from the inside. Um, and a lot of these holes have been uh, re-drilled and uh, glued and there's a lot of repair work done. This one's not too bad. I have a, a xylophone that is um, pretty terrible with that. So what you're going to need to replace all of this is a length of latex tubing. I got this off of Amazon and this is the outer diameter of this is 0.2 inches. So one fifth of an inch. The inner diameter is 0.12. So that's, that's the diameter that I'm using for this latex tubing. And this is the tubing that's going to go um, down on the bottom that the bars rest on. And so it's got a little bit, of, a nice amount of spring to it. And it's pretty inexpensive. I think this was 30 feet of it that I ended up getting for nine bucks, I think. And the other thing you're gonna need is a different size tubing. And this is a little harder to find, but I got, got it off of a, um, I don't know, a specialty store that just sold latex tubing. And this is, the outside diameter is um, one eighth of an inch. And the inside diameter of that little tiny hole that you really can't see, especially since I got it in black, since that was an option, is one sixteenth of an inch. So it's a very tiny hole. And I originally tried putting this stuff to cover the, the pins, but it does not hold, it's not small enough of a diameter on the inside. And as you play, the sheathing comes off and falls off and looks like um, macaroni laying all over the floor um, when you're done with it. And it doesn't work very well. So um, the other things you'll need are a pair of scissors. These little nippers are fantastic for pulling nails because well, you can use a hammer, which you'll also need a hammer to pull the nails out this way. Um, it's really hard to get leverage on anything that doesn't damage the xylophone. So I use these nippers to pull out the nails and I'll show you how to do that. And a screwdriver for this particular brand. All of the hardware is, is screwed in. So that's the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take off this end block here the screws and, and I apologize if this takes so long you know feel feel free to fast forward through this part I haven't gotten fancy with the editing unless I do get fancy with the editing I could take this home and get fancy with the editing so that's one side of it here's the other side the small end and I'm going to save these screws and the grommets that go with them, they're not just screws, but there's a little, there's a little grommet that goes with it. I wanna keep those with the screws. 
because number one, they um, help secure the screw in its in its place, the screw head, and also number two, they, uh, they look good. They look better than just a screw in a hole. Um, so one, now I've got them loose, and so these just come right off sometimes. This one is glued, and I believe I'm the one that glued that because a few years ago, it was super loose, and most of the holes on the, the ends were stripped. So now I've got these, and they're held in with a little tiny nail in this groove. And so I'm going to pull out that nail on both of the ends of this with my little nippers. So I'm gonna get my nippers in there and grab the head of the nail and I wanna save that nail. I'm gonna save all the hardware I can because even the stuff I'm going to put back on here, I can use for other things like hanging pictures or replacement parts for when it breaks again. Ah, this one's bent. This one went in. This one got bent, oh dear. Tragedy, a bent nail. I have to, we'll deal with that later. In just a minute. Pull the ones out of this one. And out of this one, right there, just like that. Oh, is this another, this, here's another bent one. Oh man, bent, what the heck? So, we got these blocks. I'm gonna set them aside for a moment. And now, we have these old bumpers in there. Uh, they're they're kind of stiff, they're kind of stiff. Um, they're not the worst that I had. I, I fixed the worst that I had first because they were driving me crazy. Um, but these, you're going to want to save these just for a moment. We'll get out our tubing. And you're going to measure how long this is. Because depending on your make and model and when it was made. And this stuff with the make and model and when it was made um, could vary. So uh, I'm going to measure this to make sure. I'm going to put these ends together here. And then these ends together here when I have the right length. I'm going to cut it with my scissors. Boom. And I'm going to do it twice because they are both the same length. Okay, let's pull this out. So, um, yeah, depending on the make and model of your instrument, you may have different pin styles, and there are replacement sets for these pins. Um, and Judy Pine at West Music is pretty fantastic with finding out, you know especially if you've got uh, Studio 49 or Sonor or even old Golden Bridge. Um, she's, she's really good at finding uh, what year and what model and the make and what kind. You just send her pictures and she's, uh, she can hook you up with the right kind of repair kits. Um, this just happens to be, um, since it's Parapol, I've got uh, these things which I'm sure I, I, would, I could go through Parapult to get those, but I kind of, I wanted to try a little DIY action on this project. Okay, so I've got these two, hopefully correct lengths of rubber tubing, and I'm going to put them back into the blocks that I have here. And some of these nails are horrifically bent. Oh, the horror, the tragedy, how awful. And they are, that was not too bad. So I'm gonna hold it with my nippers because my pudgy fingers were never all that great at playing piano either. But they're really not great at holding teensy, tiny, little nails. And so I'll put the, put the tubing into the groove, stick the nail, tap it right in. And do the same with the 
other side. The other tube. Oh, these terrible bent nails. They are really bent. Feel forward to fast feel free to fast forward this part, man. Okay. Well, they're still bent, but they're only squiggly now instead of just so completely bent. So I'll do that with the second tubing. And maybe, maybe if you're building along with me, this is the part where <laughs> you, ah, you're building along with me. And maybe you don't mind that I'm dropping things and, and dealing with bent nails because maybe you're dealing with the same kind of thing. And that's okay. We shall deal with these things. Um, yeah, so this just happens to be, these are the lengths and um, the dimensions for the parapole instruments. And mine, like I said, some of them are very old. So we've got this one. Tap that little boat in there. And now we're ready for the big end. Same process, but on the bigger end of wood. So I'm going to put the tubing in right here. And this only slightly bent little nail. Could have dropped in here somewhere. I'm going to lay the tubing in. Stick the nail where we want it to go. And give it a tap. And that, that's what it looks like when you finished it there. The nail is just tapped in, holding the tubing in place. You don't have to go all the way down flush with the bottom of the groove. You just have to get the little guy to stay. And I have another nail here somewhere but I don't know where he went. Well, that's a bummer. That's a big bummer. I think I lost it. Um, that happens. I might have to find one off the scrap pile for now. Um, so, take the other end of this. Oh, and you also, something you want to do is you want you do want to make sure that you have the the correct end connected to the correct end um, because if you don't well that would be bad that would be bad I'm wondering if I have any other I'm going to make do with something here this is this is how how DIY this can be I'm gonna take a paper clip why because I have a paper clip in my desk and really these are just nothing more than little tiny paper clip so I'm gonna snip off the end of the paper clip and look at that now I have a brand new perfectly straight probably works better than the other ones a little tack right here that I can tap right in to the hole if I can coordinate my hands enough to do so so I've got that Just tap it right in. There we go. There's my little improvised paper clip nail. And that is how you improvise, people. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna take this little this little bit of stuff and angle so I can show you what I'm doing. Put the big end on the big end and a little end on the little end, and the tension kind of holds it there. And I'm going to put the screws back in the top and make sure that they go through and get the holes. So I'll start with this one on the end. And I have this really cool ratcheting screwdriver 
You don't have to have a ratcheting screwdriver. I just happen to have a ratcheting screwdriver. So screw that one in. And the remaining two. Want to push them through. There we go. And crank that all down. Like so. Nice and tight. But not going crazy with it so it strips the hole. I think this one might be. This one on the end is stripped. So. Um, later I might take out, take these screws out and I would put um, either a little piece of paper or some wood glue or a little little chunk of leather shoelace in there, works really well. Um, and then I can screw that back in there. Um, but really it's, it's not that big of a problem because there's two other screws um, helping us out. So I'm gonna take this end here, do the same thing. Screw this baby in. That one's not stripped. That one's good. And the remaining two on the ends of these. just a matter of taking these tubing, this tubing that we have newly put in here, and I'm actually going to pull out these pins and replace them, but I'm going to do that in a separate video. Um, I'll do that next, so you can watch that next video. And so I'm just going back and forth, over and under, just weaving it in and around these pins on the top and the bottom. And now the tubing is replaced and it should sound much better as the bars are now riding on that tubing and making a wonderful sound. So that is how you replace this part. And hope that was helpful. And see the next video for how to replace these pins and the covers to those. Uh, it's a little different process. So have a great day.